Hey crazies, most of you probably get the basic idea of photosynthesis. Plants pull water up from their roots, inhale some carbon dioxide from the air, and use energy from the sun to power a chemical reaction. It's basically how they eat. But like a lot of things in biochemistry, it's a little more complicated than that. Photosynthesis is wild. Actually, plants are not the only thing you can photosynthesize. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Organisms like algae and cyanobacteria can do it too. Photosynthesis has been around a lot longer than plants have. It's just easier to talk about plants because they're more familiar to people. Hashtag team trees. All right, some of you may not know this, but I'm married to a biologist. She helped me a lot with this video, so if I get anything wrong, it, it's her fault. What was well, that? It's my fault. It's always my fault. That's what I thought. Anyway, something I've learned from our conversations is that in biology, there's always a deeper level where you can ask more questions. Think of them as various levels of abstraction. At the top, you'll find our original explanation for photosynthesis. Plants use water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to make food. Down at the bottom is the full atomic level, which is usually unnecessary, and often overwhelming to the point of uselessness. As a physicist, I like to see how deep I can go before that happens. So let's do this. So far, photosynthesis is like one big mystery box. The water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight go in, and then glucose and oxygen come out. That glucose is a sugar, and sugar equals food. But that visual is pretty misleading. It gives you the impression that if you have a bunch of water and carbon dioxide, and you shine some light on it, then the molecules will just rearrange themselves. Which is false. If that were true, you could get the same reaction to happen by just shining some light on this carbonated water. The truth is, none of those molecules can absorb enough light to react like that. They need help. A lot of help. There's a lot going on in this box. Let's go deeper. In reality, the water and carbon dioxide aren't even used in the same stage. Stage one is where water and light come together to make oxygen and some energy. The oxygen is released, some of which makes it out to the atmosphere. The energy is passed on to stage two, where it's used to transform carbon dioxide into something called a sugar precursor. It isn't actually turned into the sugar glucose until stage three. Technically speaking, that sugar precursor can become all sorts of sugars, not just glucose. Are you gonna be on my case the whole video? If you keep messing up, yeah. Ugh. He's right, as usual, but this process is going to be complicated enough. I've gotta draw the line somewhere. So for the rest of this video, stage three makes glucose. Just go with it. We're going to focus most of our attention on stage one, because that's where light goes in and oxygen comes out. Photo means light, so we should focus on the light reactions. To understand how the heck that works, you know where we need to go. Deeper. The process that happens in stage one is called the Z scheme because some of its parts kind of look like the letter Z. There are five separate parts, each taking in some particles and spitting out others. I, I warned you this was gonna get involved, but it it it's worth it, I promise. Part A splits water into an oxygen and a bunch of ions. That's four electrons and four protons. Usually those protons are labeled as ionized hydrogen or H+, but I'm a physicist, not a chemist. I'm just gonna call it what it is, a proton. As I said before, the oxygen is simply released, but most of those ions are gonna get used in the rest of stage one. Part B is where the magic happens. Light comes in and gives up its energy to an electron, knocking it loose. One of the electrons from part A quickly falls in to fill the gap left behind. The loose electron is free to move on to part C. How the heck does that thing work, chlorophyll? Deeper. Each plant cell is filled with little green packets called chloroplasts. Chlorophyll being inside chloroplasts? That's not a coincidence. Biology is real big on prefixes and suffixes. Inside each chloroplast, there are even smaller pancake things. This is where stage one is actually happening. On the surface, you'll find a lump of various pigment molecules, many of which are chlorophyll, which give plants their distinctive green color. Each of those pigments can absorb a different color of light. As you can imagine, the more light a plant can absorb, the better off it is. So the more variety of pigments, the better. 
a pair of special chlorophyll hang out in the central opening. That's where our electron is attached. Light comes in, the appropriate pigment absorbs it, and that energy gets passed around until it gets to that middle chlorophyll. The electron is knocked loose, and another falls in to fill the gap. The mechanism is actually kind of cool. We call it a photosystem. And there are two photosystems in stage one of photosynthesis. So what happens with that loose electron? It's got some excess energy we can use. That electron hops from molecule to molecule in part C, making biological energy along the way. Well, it's not like it's loose energy floating around. That's not a thing. Energy is just a property, but in biology, the word almost always refers to ATP. A biologically useful molecule that stores energy. This molecule is constructed from stuff already floating around nearby. The energy from the electron is given up to combine those parts into ATP. That's all part C does. It makes ATP. Part D is another photosystem. Light comes in, an electron is knocked loose, and the electron from part C falls in to take its place. Part E is another assembly machine. But instead of assembling ATP, this one assembles something called NADPH. Biologists and their acronyms. Just think of it like a little bus that carries electrons around. Seriously, they call it an electron bus. It just helps the cell move the electrons over to stage two. That's it, nothing crazy. This is what stage one looks like overall. For simplicity, we're only showing the molecules that get moved around. Unfortunately, for stage two to actually work properly, we need three of these to be running simultaneously. That's the only way to give stage two all the energy and ions it needs to work. And that's where the carbon dioxide comes in. Remember the carbon dioxide? Plants can't grow without carbon. Stage two happens in the main space of those green packets inside the cell. Three carbon dioxide molecules come in, along with a bunch of energy and charge from stage one. Through a process called the Kelvin cycle, those molecules are turned into CGP, I, 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 I mean G3P. That's the sugar precursor we talked about earlier, which will be made into glucose in stage three. Wait a minute. It takes two of those G3P molecules to make a glucose. That means the cell needs six stage ones and two stage twos just to make one glucose. That's forking ridiculous. So how do photosynthesis? Well, plants and other photosynthesizing organisms use water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to literally make their food. This process is nowhere near simple though. A whole bunch of complex chemical processes are used. Some molecules need to be added to the system, but others continuously cycle around. All just to make sugar molecules that allow them to grow and continue to exist. So, were you prepared for the complexity of that process? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. This was a special video today, so no featured comment. I'll get to those next time when I, I get back to my normal routine. Thanks for watching.